So I wanted to add a video about um, exciting a instrument with a broadband uh, excitation. So when I blow over a organ pipe, as I've done in class, you hear one note or you know a note plus some overtones and get excited. Um, the question is, what am I doing when I'm blowing through that organ pipe or when I blow into a flute or when I blow into a clarinet? Um, it's very similar to when you pluck a guitar string. The idea is that what you do is you effectively excite a wide range in frequencies. Okay. Um, so I want to start by showing um, this is a, a spectrum analyzer for my microphone. So as I talk, you can see down here the frequencies that are present in my voice. And so this is frequency, you see 980 hertz, 2 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, and the power um, in dB of sound waves that are in the voice signal that I'm sending. And you can view it as a power spectrum here or view it on an oscilloscope. You can see my what my voice looks like in terms of the pressure fluctuations picked up by the microphone. And you see it's kind of all over the place. Um, and so, um, you know, if you look at my voice, there is there are certain frequency ranges that are in my voice. Um, if I do things like whistle, for example, I go, you see a very distinct frequency. Let me pause that. So here you see that using my mouth as a resonant cavity, that's how you whistle. Um, your mouth is a resonant cavity. It doesn't use your throat that much, actually. You can produce a very clean frequency here. So the power spectrum says that it's, uh, you know, around, uh, say, one and a half kilohertz is the sound I just made with my mouth. And we can look at that also um, in the oscilloscope. So here I can make a very clean sine wave. Watch. Just by whistling, okay? And so this is, you know, the, the pressure in the sound wave versus time, and it looks very much like a, a, a sinusoidal wave. Okay, so let me go back to here. Now, when I um, blow across the entrance to an organ pipe or across a flute, what happens is I generate a broadband spectrum. Another, uh, another instrument where you do this is, uh, is brass instruments like trumpets or trombones. Uh, and there you're kind of buzzing into the mouthpiece. So if I um, buzz, we can look at the spectrum the buzz produces. And let me shut up and let it quiet down here. Okay. <laughs> Just buzzing my lips produces a raise at all frequencies, essentially. You don't really see any distinct features in there like you do with my voice. So if I say hello, you see distinct frequencies that show up. If I go... Everything raises up, so it's as if um, all frequencies are excited. And I can look at the oscilloscope too and go. <laughs> so it's kind of a range of different frequencies um, are apparent in the signal. Um, and so this broadband excitation is what happens when I blow across the um, uh, the entrance of the organ pipe or the flute or the. Um, in the case of a clarinet, there's a reed that's at the uh, mouthpiece, and by blowing through it, I make the reed flap back and forth, and that reed uh, launches sound waves at various frequencies into the clarinet. Okay, so when I launch all these sound waves into the instrument, so into the clarinet, into the trumpet, so I'm launching, uh, when I you know buzz my lips, I'm, what I do is I produce sound waves, and if I plot the power in the sound waves as a function of frequency, it's, it's broadband. I don't pick out a certain frequency. I kind of launch power into a wide range of sound waves. It's kind of, a, again, a broadband excitation. That's what I mean, a wide range of frequencies. My lips vibrating or not vibrating at a, one particular frequency. There's all kinds of frequencies there. Okay. Um, and then what I can do is I'm launching these sound waves into uh, the instrument. The instrument has certain resonant frequencies. And actually, here, let me show you a uh, the resonant spectrum for a trumpet. This comes off of the Hyperphysics website. So for a trumpet, um, what I'm showing here in pink um, are the uh, response curves at, at, as a function of frequency. And so you see a number of resonances here. Um, 
that have a certain response to them. This is like the resonance curves when we looked at damped driven oscillators. Okay, so the, it turns out that the seventh harmonic of the trumpet here has the biggest response. Okay, so if I can couple energy into that mode, it will uh, vibrate. I mean, it will resonate quite strongly. Um, and so what, when I'm um, when you're playing a trumpet, I mean, I used to play trombone. It's been a long time, but to change the note that you're playing, you can change the way you vibrate your lips. And what that does is changes the um, the spectrum of sound waves you launch. Now that spectrum, let me go back here. So here's your trumpet curve. So let me reproduce that in a schematic form here. Here's my response curve. Okay, the resonances in the Okay, so I have some resonances in my spectrum. Um, so as I uh, pump sound waves in here, uh, all these sound waves get injected in. The ones that match the resonant frequencies that happen to lie here will be, um, uh, the, the resonances will be driven within the trumpet. And so what that means is that it means that the energy can build up, it can resonate, so the, the waves will bounce back and forth within the trumpet, the phase of the reflection is such that the, the you generate a standing wave, and if you remember that demo that I did in class with the, the standing wave on a string where I matched the resonant frequency, the amplitude just built up and up and up and up as I pump energy in, so the same kind of thing happens in the trumpet. You're buzzing your lips, and the buzzing of the lips is not that loud, but you're pumping energy into this resonant mode, and it will grow up in amplitude and generate a very loud tone um, at one of the resonant frequencies. And, you know, if, if your um, drive signal here um, that, uh, that you're putting power in, um, basically you'll put power into all these modes that overlap um, with the uh, with your drive spectrum. So, for example, if I were to, if this is my um, trumpet curve here, and I were to change the way I blow my uh, blow the mouthpiece so that the the actual injected power that I put into the system looks like this instead, I'm going to access these modes down here and not so much these modes. Okay, so I can change the way I drive the system. Um, to connect to different resonant modes of the trumpet, okay? And the same goes with the organ pipe. So in class, uh, when I uh, blew in the organ pipe and covered the bottom, right? So the, the answer to that concept test was when you close the end of the tube, the fundamental frequency shifts down. But when I blew in it, it sounded like it went up because it turns out that the blowing into the tube accessed the first overtone primarily compared to the fundamental, okay? And that just has to do with um, how the, uh, the spectrum uh, of sound waves that me blowing into the tube generates, okay? Um, all right, and so hopefully that's clear. The, uh, the idea is that you kind of put energy into a broad range of sound waves, but the ones that you hear are the ones that resonate with the instrument, the ones that uh, drive up these resonant modes that we see um, down here, okay? All right, so I'll stop there.